first Samuel. First Samuel chapter 8 verses 1 to 18. Praise God. Have you found it, church? Amen. Amen. First Samuel chapter 1 verses uh, 1 to 18. Let's read this responsibly. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and gave to Samuel unto Ram, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the king is pleased to have him. When he said, Give us a king to judge us, and Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt, in the end of this day, burning in the house of the enemy, and serve other gods, so do we also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him to have been his over the and to have his over the kids, and to send them to the years of Sarah, and to be his harvest, and to be his children to Sarah, and to be his children to Sarah. And he will take daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers. And you will take your fields and your vineyards and your daughters, even the best of them, and give them to the servants. And he will take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. And you will take your And he will take the tenth of your sheep, and he shall be his servants. And he shall cry out in the day because of your king, and the Lord will not hear you in the day. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'd like to bring you the message, Give us a king. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for your holy presence in this meeting, in our meetings today. We thank you, Lord, that you are king over this church. You reign over us, O Lord God. And we pray, Lord Jesus, this afternoon, that you would anoint your words and speak to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Lead your church, O Lord God. Be before us. Be with us. Be behind us, Lord. Because you are everywhere in this church, O Lord God. And you are the center of our worship today. Lord, we magnify you and we praise you. We bring back glory, praises, and honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Praise God. Before you are seated, shake the hand of your neighbor. Tell him or her, who is your king? Praise God. And you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands for the Lord, church. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was a surgeon 
in the army and he gave passes to nine soldiers, nine GIs, so that they could go out and enjoy their day. But sad to say, these nine soldiers, trainees, they came back to the camp late and they came one at a time. And the sergeant was waiting at the door, at the gate of the camp. And the first guy arrived. The sergeant said, okay, why are you late? And this guy said, okay, well, I went to a far uh, place in the province. And suddenly I woke up in the morning and I found out I was already running late. So I hired a car or a taxi. I hired a car. And on the way, the car broke down. Then I found a farmer and I bought his horse. And on the way to the camp, while we were getting near the camp, the horse suddenly died. And I had to walk going to the camp. So, okay, although the uh, excuse was so far out, huh? <laughs> it was so lame, if I may say, you know. Then suddenly the next soldier arrived. And the same thing, the same excuse. He rented the cow, the cow broke down, he bought a horse, the horse died on the road. And finally, the last soldier arrived, the ninth one. And he began to tell the same story. And the sergeant said, okay, okay, don't tell me. You're going to tell me that the cow broke down and the horse died on the road. And he said, no sir, my excuse is different. The cow did not br break down, but there were so many dead horses on the road. That's why I was late. <laughs> Excuses. Excuses. When all we have are excuses. Now the Bible tells us in chapter 8 of 1 Samuel that Samuel was getting old. And the people of Israel went to him and asked him, demanded of him that they give him a king. And the Bible tells us that Samuel was displeased. Not because of their reasons. Because they gave excuses. The first excuse that they gave Samuel was that Samuel was getting old. Samuel, kurug-kurug ka na Samuel. Sabi sayang pa, kurug-kurug ka na kaya. Nanginginig na yung tuhod. You're already getting old. So we need a new guy. We need a fresh man. Huh? One with fire and zeal and strength. But look at you, Samuel. You're getting people. You're getting a uh, cabo. It's English cabo. Cows. <laughs> forgetful. Okay, you're getting forgetful. You are already old. And secondly, Samuel, your children. Whom you have appointed judges over us to help you. Your assistants. They are not living for God. They are not living according to your ways. That's why we need a new man. We need a new king. Everybody say amen. amen. Now Samuel, let's analyze their excuses. First, the Bible said, they say that Samuel was getting old. But on the other hand, once a person who is getting old, it means he is getting wiser. He has more experience. He has more things to advise them. Can we say amen? Habang tumatang tayo tao, lalo dumadami yung kanyang experience. Can we say praise the Lord? So as we can see here, this is just a flimsy excuse. And secondly, Samuel has served them since he was a child. Sabi ng Bible, mula kanyang pagkabata, ang kanyang pagkanda. Naglikod siya ng matapat. He served them faithfully since he was a kid. How ungrateful of them. And we say, Amen? Amen. Wala naman lang silang pangundang. Wala silang uh, pag-aakubili. Na lumapit sa kanya at sabihin, 
Wala na. Obsolete ka na. You need to fade away. You're getting old. And secondly, their second excuse was that Samuel's children, his two sons, they were not following his ways. They were taking bribes. They were perverting justice. But let us remember that judges and prophets, they don't have a dynasty. Yeah. Everybody say dynasty. Dynasty. Diba sa ating Pilipino, sa mga sa Pilipinas, ay nagdawus niya, mga dynasty. Amen. Yung mayor, yung tatay, yung counselor, anak, yung barangay tawag, uh, pamangkin, no? pizza, o ano ba? Diba? Dynasty. Sunod-sunod niya sila. Walang palitan, mga kapatid. Now, they were demanding a king. But during the times of the Bible, prophets don't have a dynasty. Hindi porke propeta yung tatay, magiging propeta yung anak. But in kings, and in royalties, monarchies, they have dynasties. Again, their second excuse does not pass the test. It means it was a flimsy excuse. Nagdadahilan lamang sila. And the third excuse is that they want to become united. They said, because we have judges, we are united. We are not united. When we go to war, kanya-kanya tayo. Ang baga sa mga tagabuhol, itya-itya, aho-aho. Tawa ka nyo. Kanya-kanya sila ng disparate na kapatid. They were doing their own thing. So they said, give us somebody who will lead us so that when there's a battle, we will ready for, we will be ready for war. But those were the flimsy excuse. Yun yung mga walang kwentang kadahilanan. How many times have we given excuses when it comes to the work of the Lord? Now you're silent. How many times? As somebody has said, if a person is ready to backslide, any excuse will do. If you are ready to move out of God, out of the presence of God, you will try to find any excuse. Yes. Oh, it's because of sister, it's because of brother, it's because of the music, it's because of whatever. It's because of your fingernails. <laughs> any excuse will do. Once you are ready to get away from the presence of God, to move out of the church. And Israel is making the same excuses. They were trying to hide the real reason or their excuse for having a king. Now, once we go on with the verse, finally, the real reason why they want to have a king surfaced. Lumabas din ang tunay na dahilan. Tandaan nyo ito, mga kapatid. Kahit anong tako mo, lalabas pa rin. Can we say amen? Dahil walang lihim na hindi na lumabas. There is no secret that will not be revealed. It will all surface. Someday, somehow, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but you cannot hide forever. Can we say amen? That's what Moses told the people. He told his people, the Israelites, be sure your sin will find you out. It cannot be hidden forever. So finally, in the same chapter, they admitted the real reason they wanted to have a king. They said, we want to become like the other nations. Kasi ingit kami. Hello? Here they are. God was reigning in their midst. God, God was leading them. In fact, in the book of Exodus, the Bible tell us, tells us that God was before them. God was in their midst and God was behind them. God was everywhere in their life. He was their leader. He was the one who gave them the victory. He was the one who made them to triumph over their enemies. And now, here they were. They wanted a king, a human king. Everybody say amen. amen. 
So the Lord told Samuel, Samuel, don't be displeased. They are not rejecting you, but they are rejecting me. That is what God said. When they asked for a king to lead them, Israel was actually rejecting the king of kings and the lord of lords. How sad. You're the king and I am the and you're the queen and I am the king of hearts. So the question today, who is the king in your life? Is it God or is it you? Hello? Yes. No, Pastor, the king is Jesus. Really? <laughs> Can you say amen? Amen. Yeah. Who is giving the orders in your life? Is it you or is it God? Really? <laughs> now you have to be honest when you answer these questions. Because Israel was asked these questions. Who is reigning in your life? They have decided we don't want you God anymore. We don't want you. We want somebody we can see. And not only that, we are tired of the prophets. Look at the prophet. Look at his garb. In you know, garb. Garment. So yeah, you can turn to garb. G A R B. I may do what I do. Look at the way he stands. Just read your Bible. Remember John the Baptist? How does he look? He was wearing animal clothes, animal skins. And his hair was disheveled. Wala man ng pumada. He was not presentable in physical appearance. So they were saying, we want somebody regal and presentable with penis. Penis. With good manners and right hand. So that when people see him, they will be impressed. That is our king. He's the guy. He's the man. Huh? Very impressive to see. That's what we want. Just look at the other nations. We are jealous. Look at us. We don't even have a king. So that was the real reason. But let's go back again. Why did God choose Israel? You know why? Because God said, I want to choose you because I want you to be different. I don't want you to be like the other nations. But here they were wanting to be the same as everybody else. Handa na kayo? Sa susunod? The Bible said, the Apostle Peter wrote, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. When you say something is peculiar, it is different. You are not like the mold. You are not like a clone. You are unique in the sight of God. Can we say amen? God chose you to be different. God chose you so He can change your life. Can we say praise the Lord? Pinili tayo ng Panginoon para maging kakaiba tayo. Hindi para maging kapareha ng lahat. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is the same creature. He is the same creation. No. no, the Bible said he is a new creation, a new creature, a different person. Yeah. And we say praise the Lord. Praise we were created to be 
be different. To live a holy life. To live a separated life. To live for Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? amen? But people are cowering these days. I want to be the same like everybody else. Just look at the way people dress today. Diba? Yes. Sa ating mga pangalamig, ngayong panahon, sa gumpit ng mga tao, nausun mo yung siyete, lahat na kasiyete. <laughs> Pag naka-old siya pa, pagkatawa ng tao. <laughs> diba? Pag na naman may butas ka rito. <laughs> You're supposed to have a haircut that's 7-7. Why are you? Why do you have a haircut? 8-8. <laughs> People want to be the same. Oh, I want to be like uh, Tom Cruise. I want to be like Sharon Bonetta or whoever else. Well, I have bad news for you. It's not, uh, it's not actually a bad news. It's a good news. Because God called you to be different. God called you to live a holy life. God called you to live for Him. God called you to be according to His image. Can we say amen? There's a song that uh, I remember when I was in Baguio. To be like Jesus, this gold possesses me. The Spirit helping me, to Him I'll be. To be like Jesus, this gold possesses me. The Spirit helping me, like Him I'll be. That should be the goal of every Christian. Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to be more like Jesus. I don't want to be like Tom Cruise. I don't want to be like all these actors in Hollywood. I want to be like Jesus because he is my Lord. He is my King. He is my other thing. Can you say praise the Lord? But Israel forgot this. Forgot the main reason God called them. And God called us to be different. Everybody say, to be different. To be One more time, let's clap our hands for the Lord. <laughs> and in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, we are exhorted not to, to love the world or the things of the world. Yes, we are in this world. But the Bible said, we are not of the world. We are now a different citizen. We are not a citizen of this earth. We are a citizen of heaven. Amen. Can we say amen? Amen. Pass for you. Lahat ng citizen ng heaven, nasa kamay. Where's your passport? <laughs> I forgot my camera! I forgot my camera! 
the pool of the world. Anything that pulls you away from God, that is an idol. Yes. Hello. Amen. Lot's wife was running away. That's the problem. She was running away, but her heart was still in sorrow. And that's what we call a tragedy. She was running. It's a problem. The string was there. The rope was still there. She was still shackled to the world. Nakatalik pa siya doon sa salimutan, mga kapatid. I remember a story I read. There was a family. They were all sleeping. And in the middle of the night, the dog started barking. Rock, 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 rock. And the husband said, Oh! Dog, stop! When she opened the door, there was smoke all over the house. The house was on fire. It's a good thing the dog barked. They were all able to get out. And they, when, they, when they had their accounting, where is uh, mother present? Where is sister present? Where is big brother present? Where is small brother present? Then suddenly the youngest child said, Where is Brownie? <laughs> Brownie was still chained to the house. Now it's a good thing Brownie saved the family. And the apostle Paul said, I fear that I will warn others, but I myself will be a castaway. <clears throat> Here you are. I remember just this week, I was uh, uh, viewing a movie about the rapture. And there was this pastor, he was preaching, you know, oh, I need God. When the rapture came, he was left behind. <laughs> and you know what? While I was watching, I said, Lord, don't let this happen. It's a sobering lesson to us. We cannot be like Lot's wife. We need to have our eyes focused on Jesus. Focused on the Lord. Focused on our King of Peace and God of Lords. Can we say amen? But Israel lost it. They have lost their focus. They don't want God to reign over them. They don't want God to be their king. Now, when God responds, so they asked for a king. What did God say? God said, okay, you want a king? You get a king. Even though God doesn't want it at that moment. Now let me give you, give you a bit of history. The Bible actually predicts, the Bible actually prophesied that the time will come when Israel will have a king. In the book of Genesis, it was already foretold that Judah will reign in Israel. And in the book of Deuteronomy, again, the Bible tells us that the time will come when Israel will want a king. Now is God against kings? No. Because God himself said that the time will come, Israel will have a king. But the problem was, they were asking at the wrong time. Hello? Yes. Does, one, does God want you to be rich? Yes. Who wants to be rich? Yes. Rich in mercy and love, yes. and joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith. When we say rich, what you think? What are you thinking? You're thinking of what? Money. I'm not talking about money today. I'm, ta I'm talking about the essential things in life, the most important things in life. Yes, money. You need that. We need money. Who doesn't need money? Give it to me. I'm just kidding. We all need money. 
flesh. We need it for their daily life. But we cannot make money our master. Yes. Can we say praise the Lord? The Bible already foretold the time will come, Israel will have a king. Yeah. Yet, they were asking for a king in at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. Hello. Yes. So God told them, okay, they want a king before you give to them what they want. Tell them what the king will do to them and their families. You have to be warned first. As somebody said, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. It means you will be prepared. So what will the king do? The Bible said the king will take away. Everybody say, take away. Pag meron na kayong hari, kukunin niya. Anong sabi nila? We want to have a king who will serve us. Sorry sir, wrong number. The king will not serve you. It is you who will serve the king. The king will take away your children to serve him, to be his cook, to be his masahista. Anong sa English yun? Masahist. Oh, yun. Massager. Anong sabi nila? Reflexologist. He will be drivers in his chariots. Not only that, he will again take away. Remember, he will not give. Amen. He will take away. Kukunin niya. He will take away the tent. Baba, tayo siya na. Everybody say it. The tent of your corn. The tent of your harvest. Lahat ng mga pinatanggilin mo, babawasan ng hari. And you will be his servants. Ayun, may nag-ingin mo. Sige, ingin mo. Who said amen? Bless? Grace. Oh, Grace. Ano ko yung hapit? She had this. You see? The king will get your children to be his soldiers. Your children will become his errand boys. You see, once we try to get a king outside of King Jesus, you will become his servant. Magiging mga alipin kayo. And the Bible tells us, in the book of the epistles, the letters, the Bible tells us that we were once servants of sin. Pag ikaw ay alipin, satanas, wala kang kalayaan. Let me give you an example. Remember the commercial in the Philippines? Isa pa ka? It was a beer about a beer, a commercial about a beer. Everything starts with what? With one. All these bad habits. Just try it, my friend. Look at those people who have been uh, enslaved to drugs and all of these vices. Where did it all, did it all start? It started with? One. Just try it. Isang case kagad ang inyong mo, hindi, di ba, Brother Prince? Sa patikin-tikin. Nalala kayo kawit na naman, sa Philippines. Nagsimula daw saan? Sa patikin-tikin. It started with trying only a few. Just one teaspoon only. Just a drop only. Just one singhut. Only. And the next thing you know, 
they have been enslaved by sin. They have become bound. They have become slaves to sin. Can we say amen? Yes. Ang kasalanan madaya. Look at all the commercials in the television. Mar or cut. <laughs> the car is so long. With a pissy, you know? Macho man. Like me a little bit. <laughs> Just trying to make you laugh. Tapos na nabayo nga. Diba? Ang ganda nila, diba? Very impressive. How about if they will make a commercial and show all those people who are in UI? <laughs> those people who don't have lungs, they will not show you that. Let me say amen. Yeah. They will only show you the good part. Yeah. Let me warn you, my friends. Sin comes with icing. Can be coated. Sino na kain na M&M's? Pag hindi pa, magugulat ako. Diba? M&M's. M&M. Okay. M&M's. Outside is coated, right? Inside there's peanut. Oh, it's so good. But sin is different. It's coated outside. It's sweet. Presented very good. Very appetizing. Very attractive to the eyes. Let's go back to the book of Genesis. When Eve was strolling in the garden, nagdadagat si Eva ng biglang may tumawag. Eva. So <laughs> kailangan mo pang aking yung boses, no? Ay, punta mo Eva. Eva. Ako ba? <laughs> so the devil called Eve. Eve. So Eve came. And he sold the fruit. And the devil said, Had God said, there was doubt in the devil's voice. Hello? Amen. Talaga bang sinabi ng Diyos? Talaga bang masama? Masama ba yung makisama ka lang ng sandali? Is it evil? <laughs> Question mark. And what happens? You begin to doubt the word of God. Yes. You begin to doubt God's commandment. Yes. And Eve also began to doubt. And the Bible tells us. The devil said, don't you know? That once you eat and partake of this food you will become like gods. Magiging mga Diyos ko. In other words, the devil was saying that God is selfish. God doesn't want you to be happy. That's why he has all these commandments. He has all these orders in his word. No, sir. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to have a joyful life. A life that is away from sin. Once you eat of it, you will surely die. And the next thing you know, because doubt has entered in, man began to say, maybe we will die. Or probably, siguro, baka nga eh. Siguro, Pilipino si Evan. Tayo mga Pilipino, siguro, baka maaari. Pag-isipan ko, tsaka na, mga ganoon. We always answer that way. Siguro na mamamatay. But God said, you will surely iyak. Walang pag-aalangan. Mamamatay ka talaga. <laughs> Ang sabi ng tao, siguro baka maaari. And the next thing you know, she looked at the fruit and the Bible said, it was good for food. <laughs> pag 
imagine kayo ng bangga na. <laughs> yung mani pa lang naman ka. Tapos meron bagong oog. Chapter 9, verses 57 to 67. 
the Lord Jesus Christ warned his would-be followers. There were people who came to Jesus. They told the Lord Jesus, Lord, we want to follow you. Lord, we want to be your disciples. But Lord, I still have to go home because you know, I need to get married first. <laughs> and the other one said, Lord, I have to uh, tidy up everything at my home. Lord, my father died. I need to bury him first. To which Jesus replied, let the dead bury their dead. Amen. And Jesus went on to tell them, you need to count the cost. Who among you here has started building your house? Sino sa'yo nagkapay ng bahay niyo? Okay, salamat. The Bible said, before you build a house, you need to count the cost. Can you say amen? amen? Because there have been people, they started building a house. I want my house this big. But your budget is this big. <laughs> the next thing you know, after a few months, you only have pillars. No house. That's what Jesus was telling the people. You need to count the cost. Do you really want to follow me? Count the cost. Is there among you here who will go into battle? Who will take a guerra? Your enemies are hundred thousand, and you are only ten thousand. Will you go to war? Jesus said, "Of course not. What you will do is try to make a peace treaty, because you are outnumbered." You need to count the cost. And Jesus told them, Come, take up your cross. Amen. You want to follow Jesus? Sino gusto sumunod sa Panginoon? Amen. Sino gusto sumunod sa Panginoon? Amen. O kung hindi na yung kamay. Because we want the crown. We want a king. Nobody wants the cross. But Jesus said, Come. Take up your cross. Lord, hindi ba wala na lang yan? No. You need to take up your cross. Amen. And follow me. Can I just follow you, Lord, without the cross? Jesus said no. First, come. Then, take up your cross and follow me. That's why many were dissuaded from following him. They want the bread. They want his miracles. They want all the blessing. But please, Lord, no crosses. But Jesus told them, Come, follow me. Take up your cross. God gave Israel a warning. This is what will happen. And listen, this is the last part. I'm already ending. God said, the time will come when you feel that you have become enslaved by your king, that you will cry out to God. Listen to this warning. A very solemn warning. That you will cry out to me and I will not listen. Iiya ka sa akin. Hiringi ka ng tulong, Lord. And God said, I will not listen. Because you have made your choice. Pinili mo yun. This is what we call God's permissive will. Although God is against it, but since you insist, since you have the power to choose, may karapatan ka kasi pumili. Hindi ka pipili din ng Diyos. Wawarningan ka niya. God will remind you. God will uh, reprimand you. But God will not force you. If you insist, 
insist on something, then God will give you His permissive will. Mm, that's right. And God will prepare you for it. Pag dumating na yung problema, huwag kang iiyak sa akin. <laughs> Hindi ako makikinig sa iyo. Maganda itong kakahilika na ito. <laughs> A solemn warning. Let's all stand. Let me end. But in spite of the warning given, Israel still clamored for a king. Actually, in the first few verses of chapter 8, they said, we want a king. But when they were given the warning, they still insisted more forcefully. In spite of your warnings, we still want a king. They gave three reasons. We want to be like the other nations. But the Bible chose them, chose them to be separated for Him, for the Lord Jesus Christ. They said their king will lead them. But actually, if you analyze the history of Israel, almost 90% of their kings were evil. Sabi nila, the king will lead us. Yes, their kings led them to sin. Not to God. Their third reason, the king will go before us to fight our battles. They said their king will go out to fight their battles. But read their history. It was their children. It was them that went into battle. You see, sin is a liar. Satan is a liar. He is the deceiver. He will try to lead us to live a life of sin. To reject the King of Kings. To say, I have no time for you, God. But yet, there are consequences. And here is the Lord telling us, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Sabi ng Panginoon, kung nakatot ako sa puso mo. Tinan niyo ang kaibahan, ha? Si Satan doesn't knock. Read your Bible, John chapter 10. The Bible said he is like a thief. He just comes in and steals everything, destroys you and kills you. But the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, although he is the King, he can demand everything, he can get everything from you, but no, because he is a good King. Can you say Amen? Behold, I stand at the door and now Ako. Sino yan? Si Jesus ito. Pwede ba akong pumasa? Maganda ang mga offers ko sa'yo. I'm offering you eternal life. I'm offering you real joy. Not temporary joy. I'm offering you real peace in life. Not the peace that this world gives but the peace that passes all understanding. Real peace. Let's fall on our heads. Let's raise our hands at ipunta sa ating mga kamay. Tanda na ating uh, pagsuko sa Diyos. Na Who is your king? Hindi ko pwedeng sagutin ang katanungan niya. I cannot answer this question for you. I have to answer for myself. Who is your king? Sino ngayon ang hari sa puso mo? Please, my friend, do not reject the king of kings. Do not reject the king of kings. He is here right now. His presence is here right now. He is ready to meet your needs in your life. Please say, Lord Jesus, be the king of my 